Hey there, Wastelanders, and welcome back to War Games News Radio for the second episode of our Fallout Wasteland Warfare Forged in the Fire campaign. In our last episode, we saw Jake Finch team up with the sole survivor Preston Garvey and Kate as they took on the Forged outside of the Saugus Ironworks building. But this time around, they'll square off against a gang of Protectrons that are trying to stop our heroes from getting to the Forged and their nefarious leader, Slag. Our crew picked up some loot in the last episode, which will hopefully come in handy here, and because Preston was the only one left standing after the last battle, I've decided to give him the heroic card because it just makes sense. So for this battle and this battle alone, Preston will have a couple extra tricks up his sleeve, like being able to bank critical shots, which is never a bad thing. So let's get into the action on Forged in the Fire Part 2, Robot Rampage. Let's hit it. And here we are inside Saugus Ironworks. We've got our four heroes here led up by the ever-fearless Jake Finch, who, while making their way through the factory on an attempt to defeat the Forged, have stumbled across a room full of robots. Our objective in this mission is to gain as much computer data from these three terminals in the center of the board as possible. If any of my units are in base-to-base -base contact with a terminal, they can spend an action to make a hack test. Once a terminal is successfully hacked, the computer can no longer be used to gain any information, and the character will get a counting token to show that they have hacked the information from that terminal. If that character is then defeated, then the counting token will stay where they stood and another unit can come within orange range to pick it up. But not all the robots are out to get our heroes as the construction protectron in the center of the board might activate on our side every round. At the beginning of each round, we'll roll a luck die. If it comes up with a lucky shamrock, then that protectron will activate as part of our forces for the remainder of that round. If it comes up blank, well then he's gonna join in with the rest of his buddies in trying to put a hurt on our heroes. Most of the robots will be trying to stop us with attacks, but the Robo Brain in particular has a pretty decent computer skill, so they're gonna be trying to run around the battlefield scooping up all of these information stations before we can get to them. And of course, what's the wasteland without some loot? So as always, we've got some loot markers scattered across the board. Any unit that comes into base-to-base -base contact with the terrain feature that has the um, a marker on it will be able to perform the action as required, should they be required to gain some items. And because we got the win in our last episode, we're going to get a draw from the Wasteland deck. Uh, normally the scenario, uh, the win means you can bring a weapon up to 50 caps with you uh, into the next mission, but I've decided to randomize things. So I've just got a whole bunch of crazy weapons uh, in here, big guns, really expensive stuff, all the fun things that you rarely find in a Wasteland Warfare game, they're in here. So we're going to cut the deck and see what kind of banana pants weapon we got. The Light Machine Gun. This is a great gun. It's a big gun uh, and it deals a whole whack of damage. I think the only thing that makes sense is to give this to the uh, Soul Survivor. I'm using the uh, standard Soul Survivor card for this unit, so they've got a strength of five. It's not the best for big guns, but uh, it's about as good as I've got on this roster. And hey, that's the way the Wasteland goes. Standard mission pack doesn't have a set number of rounds for uh, this scenario, but I'm deciding to set it at four rounds rather than just to play it out to the end because I want to simulate a frantic firefight in this building as our heroes just try to make their way past these bots and get back into the fight with the Forged. Okay, top of round one. I'm gonna have advantage uh, probably for the most of the game. There's only four of me versus, well, seven, seven robots, uh, eight if you count the guy uh, in the middle. Uh, speaking of which, let's find out if uh, old construction protector on here is going to join our side. Looking for that shamrock. Oh, no dice. Round one, he is a standard killbot. Well, seeing as how uh, I've got a long ways to go and a short time to get there, I'm going to go ahead with Jake first. He's got that massive red charge range, or red move range, I should say. Uh, like, he can't quite get into base contact with one move, so he's going to have to spend another boop to get up in there uh, so he can make that test next time around. He has ended his activation uh, within the uh, radiation of barrels here. Start of his next activation, he'll have to test for rad damage, uh, but that's gonna be it for Jake. Let's head over to the bots. And just our luck that the Rubo Brain is activating first, and they got the objective AI action, which means they're gonna try to, uh, well, hack us away from some points here. So they're gonna move once with their yellow movement, get into contact, with the terminal there uh, and make a hack test. Robobrain hacking the terminal uh, will get one piece of info uh, if they get a six or lower. That's a crit fail. So there you go, uh, no dice 
on that. The terminal uh, for this one will not be locked out. Uh, otherwise, well, we're not going to be able to complete these missions. Uh, but uh, that's it. That's all for the RoboBrain. Not impressed by that brain bot trying to go for my objectives here. So uh, I'm going to move Preston and try to take some shots at him downrange. One move from Preston here is going to get us within a close range, actually, because of his long barrel mod with the laser musket. Preston's shot hits home and deals one damage to the Robo Brain because of his strong armor resistance to energy damage. That's gonna be a problem. Here we go, one of the Robo Brain's many hit points uh, down. I think I might have to focus fire on that thing. Well, it's the Construction Protectron right dead center who <laughs> activated next, and he's gonna take two shots with his nail gun into our boy Jake. Utility Protectron hand nail gun, two shots coming through. First one hitting on threes. It's a swing and a miss. Second shot. Same thing, also a miss. Both shots go wide, and because neither hit, Jake's actually still gonna be able to hang on to his plus one armor token there, so nothing doing. Well, I think next I'm gonna go with the soul survivor. I'm kind of terrified, actually, of what this police protector on uh, can do. I'm gonna shoot with him with the light machine gun first, uh, then move. If I move, he'll have cover, so I'm just gonna take the shot and then move. Soul Survivor with the light machine gun hitting on fives. Okay, that's gonna do it. So that's gonna be one armor break. I could have used some extra damage there, unfortunately. But we are gonna break one point of armor uh, and the bottle cap here is actually going to be a stun. So we've taken one uh, action away from that Protectron. Not bad. And Soul Survivor finishes off their turn by moving once. Getting a little bit of cover for when this inevitably happens. The Grey Protectron activates next and takes two shots with its hand laser at Preston, but because they're only hitting on threes, both shots go wide. Okay, well the gang's getting off pretty lucky so far. A couple shots coming through, uh, but nothing's connected. So I'm just gonna go with Kate, cause she's, well, the last one to go. Uh, let's go, yeah, let's go for some, for some loot. We got here, we've got a free item, not bad. Uh, and a very thematic weapon drawn from our Digital Wasteland deck here with a Molotov cocktail. I guess the Forged, uh, maybe they left this behind when they're fleeing to another area of the Ironworks. But hey, either way, we've got it now uh, and it's in Kate's possession. And you know, she still has another action. She could, well, she could try throwing that thing. It's got a range of green. Oh, but I don't want to attack. This guy could be your friend soon. I don't want to hurt him, but uh, maybe that's something best saved for next round. I guess for now, I'm just going to move. Well, Kate, we all know what she likes to do. Charge! She just moves up once to get sort of in the middle of the field, a better positioning for next time, so she can either unleash that double barrel shotgun or maybe start throwing some Molotovs around. That is unfortunately it for my side uh, for the first turn. These Protectrons have us outnumbered, well, two to one, uh, including the, uh, the randomizer there. So yeah, this could be painful. Let's run down the list. The robots kick off with the police protectron who puts two points of damage into the sole survivor with his submachine gun. But because of that stun token, he only gets one shot off. But thanks to our strong armor token, he's only going to take one point of damage. The other construction protectron takes one move to get within shooting range of Jake. Ooh, that's a miss, but it came close. This little purple guy decides to take two moves to get a little bit closer to all the action with all of his pals. And of course, because he's a robot, doesn't have to worry about those pesky radiation barrels. Next to the Fire Brigade Protectron, who's gonna move once to get a little bit closer to Kate, and I think is just, oh yeah, just outside of range with their hand cryojet weapon. So I guess they're gonna have to move to get a little bit closer. Well, a lot a bit closer. That's gonna be interesting. And the Golden Protectron moves up once and takes a long bomb shot at Preston through cover, but misses. Okay, end of round one. And I said I wanted this to be a frantic firefight, and I think we've achieved that. Uh, we're kind of in the middle of the board with all the rest of the Protectrons. Bit of a stalemate. Uh, should be able to secure at least one point of info this turn, and maybe I make a break for it to try to get another. But uh, all of these robots are about to make this a much more tangly situation. So let's get into round two. Event card for round two is Brahmin Stampede. The earth shattering sound of a Brahmin Stampede brings the fight to a short halt as the stragglers rush to get out of harm's way. Any model that spends any part of their activation within red of the battlefield edge tests agility at the end of its activation. On a fail, well, you're gonna get damage. So within red, well, that's gonna be the police protectron. Oh, none of my guys. 
as well as the Grey Guy and Golden Boy uh, are both going to be <laughs> in, in serious trouble there. And what about the Robo Brain? No, he's just outside. So there you go. Those two and that one are going to have to test agility uh, and see if they get damaged. Agility test. Passed. Agility test. Failed. Agility test. Failed. Top of round two, and I could use some reinforcements. So, everybody out there, internet land, shamrock, 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 shamrock. Blank internet. Why didn't you shamrock harder? Okay, well, there you go. He's once again on the enemy's side. Advantage my side once again. Soul Survivor's a little bit beat up. Everyone else doing okay with their uh, strong armor tokens. So I'm gonna go with Jake first, try to secure this piece of data. So we're gonna do a computer's uh, hacking test. Uh, Jake has an intelligence of five. That's a two, we win on the first one. Okay, so that's one point of data on our side in Jake's possession. That means I need to have him, well, stay alive with the piece of data until the end of the game, but uh, also means I'm probably gonna have to get myself another one, because that Robo Brain. Oh. I do need to test for radiation damage though, uh, so any uh, damage icons will be as many rads as Jake's gonna take. He takes one, okay, good news. Uh, the strong armor token is going to soak that up in this case, so that's gone, but we've saved ourselves some rads. Not bad. Uh, he still has one action left. Uh, you know, I'm tempted to throw him towards that uh, piece of data there, come away with a quick win, but those two guys are gonna be scary, and that Robo Brain has some seriously messed up weapons and abilities, so I'm just gonna shoot uh, from here into the Robo Brain. Jake with a 12.7 millimeter pistol shooting through cover, so he's gonna be hitting on twos. And that's about as far as a miss as you could get. Damn it, of course it's the Robo Brain who's gonna go first again for the robots, and he got objective, so that means it's hacking time. This could be a tie game if he gets a six or less. Another fail. That's wild, uh, but he's got another action. Let's see. Seven. You, sir, are rusty. In fact, that's a great name for this Robo Brain. This is now Rusty, the Robo Brain. Uh, it's both literal and figurative in that he can't seem to get his hacking game in order and uh, use streaking grime on him, so he's all rusty looking. So, perfect name. Back to my side, and this is kind of an opportunity for me here. Because this guy hasn't scored yet, um, I could be able to go ahead and block them off that objective. And because Kate is all jacked up on Mountain Dew, uh, I think she's the right gal for the job. So, you know what? Yes, ma'am. Kate, you're going hellbent for leather with one to move. I'm going to charge her red charge distance to get both in base contact with this goober uh, and also the objective. Uh, so that means that, well, I can't hack it until I'm out of combat, but neither can they uh, because I'm touching it. So that's a bit of a block there in my favor. Hopefully, Kate doesn't die. Grey Protectron takes two more shots at Preston and this time connects with the first one, blowing through his strong armor token and dealing one point of damage. My go, and I think I'm just gonna have to keep on plugging with Preston into uh, that Robo Brain there. I'm actually now kicking myself though for giving the Light Machine Gun to the Salt Survivor rather than Preston because they both have the same strength and can use big guns and the Robo Brain has a really good armor value against energy weapons in particular. So yeah, all of that extra armor pen penetration would be really good on Preston, who's got this wide open clear shot here. But live and learn. Let's uh, crank up the musket. Preston with the laser musket hitting on eights because of his specialty. Hey, that hits. Uh, that's two damage on two plus one energy armor. Stops it all. Same thing. Hitting on eights. Oh, is he? Is his crit now charged? No, not yet. One more shot and he'll be able to charge it. Uh, so if we hit here, it's charged up. Hitting on eights. Okay, that's a hit again. We got that uh, two plus one strong armor. All blocked. He does get a uh, quick action point. Go ahead and use to prepare there. So that's not too shabby. He's also all charged up on his uh, critical shot for his laser musket. So, okay, not too bad, all things considered. But, uh, you know, damage would have been nice. Well, it's our utility protector on in the center here who activated next. Uh, and they're not on our side, so they're shooting Jake. Protector on nail gun hitting on threes. Oh, gosh golly, that is a hit. That's all gonna bust right through his armor, uh, putting two damage through on the first shot. Uh, second one hitting on threes. 
Okay, that's, that's better. Jake was almost dead. Two damage there, does still nothing to sneeze at, so yep, yeah, that, that could have gone better. Uh, back to my side, only one uh, guy left to go, and it's the sole survivor. Uh, and I'm going to take one move with him to get a little bit closer to all the action <clears throat> there. Yeah, it's going to be a uh, light machine gun o'clock into the... Uh, Robo Brain through cover. Soul Survivor, light machine gun, close range, through cover, hitting only on threes. <laughs> okay, that's actually awesome. Okay, so that's a quick action, not too shabby. Really, really liked some extra damage, but we're gonna do uh, two armor breaks. So it's gonna be two damage, one armor. Oh, it all goes through. Okay, a little more off the top there, not bad. Uh, five hit points left now on the Protectron, but that's going to be it for the Soul Survivor, and that's it for my whole squad, so uh, it's time for the robots to run through. The Construction Protectron, in close combat with Kate, uses its hand nail gun, but misses twice. His purple buddy swings around and does much of the same, and actually lands a hit, dealing three points of damage, but Kate blocks it all thanks to her strong armor token. The Golden Protectron takes two shots at Preston through cover and swings wide. The Police Protectron, on the other hand, deals a whopping three damage to the sole survivor. Whoa, a devastating display of firepower uh, from the Police Protectron there. Four hit points down, only three left on the sole survivor. That's not good. Uh, I was hoping he was going to put out a lot more damage output, and he was going to put out a lot less, but... Oh well, uh, that's okay. Uh, we've only got one left to go, uh, and it's the Fire Brigade. And he's, yeah, within range of Jake with his cryo jet, uh, so he's going to make the attack uh, here. Uh, this protection slightly better at ranged hitting on fours. Ooh, that's a hit. So it's just going to be, uh, the bottle caps in this case aren't going to do anything. It would put him out if he was on fire. Uh, but it is going to be two damage, uh, so it's going to be two damage on two armor. Ooh, it takes it both. That's a big miss. Oof, Jake, taking more damage. I might have to pull you out of battle here if I'm going to pull out a win. Uh, speaking of which, uh, that's the end of the round. Uh, it's going to be going into the third here. Preston's all charged up. He's got reactions. He's got critical hits. Uh, but everybody else, uh, once again, not dissimilar to our last episode, uh, is doing a little bit worse for wear. Kate, uh, I guess, is actually doing just fine. Uh, but that might change in the next round. Advantage, swinging back to us. Here we go. Then card for round three is Vertibirds Overhead. No sooner than they are heard, four Vertibirds dart past above, fading into the distance to the southeast. No effect. Okay, top of round three. Preston is all charged up. He's got reactions and crits and all kinds of fun things. Jake is only has a couple hit points left, uh, and Soul Survivor's in a similar boat. And while I should probably get Jake running away from here first, because he's got our victory point, I'm going to start with... Kate, uh, and I'm going to use her to try to, well, screw with the enemy. Because as much as I want to hack this terminal here to, you know, get victory points and win the game, I can also win the game by denying points to the enemy. Uh, in this case, Protectrons, they actually can't hack, so they're really just blocking out my objectives here, whereas the Robo Brain, well, he's the enemy's hacker. So I think what I'm going to do is pull back with Kate, risk some uh, shots from the Protectrons here, and then charge into the Robo Brain, uh, denying him the ability to hack that point. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. First move, we're gonna disengage, uh, and then we've got two opportunity attacks, outnumbered opportunity attacks, in fact, to come through on Kate to see if we can pull this off. Protectron the first with an improvised weapon, outnumbered, hitting on ones, he hits for one damage, one damage on uh, three armor, I believe. She's actually going to take a damage. Uh, second Protectron, same thing, hitting on ones. <laughs> okay, uh, he also hits for one armor break uh, and two damage. Uh, stops one, takes one. Well, Kate took a couple of hits unexpectedly on that one, but this is going to be okay for us because we're going to be able to pull off this charge. Uh, so red charge move, more than enough. Going to get right in here with Mr. Tangly and stop him from doing some hacking. And while you think that might block me out from shooting him for the rest of the game, somebody can shoot into combat and always hit their intended target. So I think this might work out just fine. But no plan survives contact with the enemy, and it's gonna be this guy going first, taking two shots into Preston. Both shots going way wide. Preston's gonna use his reaction uh, here and react to those 
attacks and just move a little bit scooty up. Well, let's just keep this Preston train rolling as he's marching up the board and critically make a critical shot. It's gonna be an auto hit because it's a critical hit. He's Preston mother Garvey, so he always hits whatever he aims for in combat. And uh, we're gonna get to roll these dice and add to a three damage base. <laughs> Okay, not bad. It's just gonna be four damage uh, coming through on the Robo Brains. Two plus one. Come on, three or four. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. So he's gonna block one because of the strong armor, and then he's gonna take three damage right through, which means he now has only two of his eight hit points remaining. We might actually take this guy down because Kate's no joke in combat. The Golden Protectron takes two shots at Preston through cover and hits with one, but all the damage is stopped by his armor. Back to my side, and I think I've pushed my luck just about as far as I can with old uh, Jakey Boy Finch here. So we're just gonna run away. We're, we're gonna tactically withdraw. Uh, that, that's what we call it here. Uh, so I'm gonna move once to about there, and then, you know what? I can go. I can go item chasing. So that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, Jake's gonna come up right up in here into this terrain piece uh, and go fishing for. Oh, you've got to be kidding me! Danger card. And our danger card is disturbed wildlife, which means we draw a creature card. And creature card is passive blood bug. The blood bug lands on you and walks along your arm, seemingly unaware. Test endurance to endure the insect's disgusting presence. Uh, if we pass, everything's fine. If we fail, then Jake is poisoned. Oh, but it's uh, not permanent poison. He only gains one point uh, of poison damage should we fail. So, well, I guess we gotta see uh, if we pass this first. Our man Jake has the staggeringly low endurance of four. So, come on, Jakey boy. Oh, that's a crit fail. So, Jake's gonna take a uh, Point of poison damage. Uh, I also need to draw for an item here. And drawing from the Wasteland deck, we got the 44 Revolver. Could have really used a healing item right about now. Not a what, fourth or fifth pistol on my crew, but the Wasteland provides. Well, Jake's uh, and my curiosity may have just killed our cat here, but uh, we're gonna play that out in the next round. Uh, what well, with the poison token and all, which put that there so I don't forget, but it's going to go back to uh, robot activation. The utility Protectron moves into close combat with the Soul Survivor and takes a swing with their nail gun, but misses. But the Soul Survivor returns fire with two shots, dealing two points of damage. Well, they should really rename that thing the Close Combat Rifle, because dang, uh, not bad. Two damage through uh, onto the Utility Protectron, uh, and he also generated a quick action. But that's it, that's all for my side, meaning it's time for robotic revenge. The police Protectron closes in. I have a feeling he's not long for this world. Purple Boy is going to go chasing Kate. Yeah, he's easily going to be able to get into combat with her. But this is where things get weird because it's the Robo Brain's turn now and they've got the Mesmatron, uh, which can essentially take control of units uh, if we get, well, successful hits and all kinds of weird special effect die rolls. Uh, so let's go ahead and make that attack now. It's gonna be in close combat, so he's only gonna be hitting on fours. And uh, depending on what we roll here, uh, he might be able to get mind control of Kate. So fours. Oh, that was really close. It just dawns on me now that I forgot to roll for uh, the uh, Protectron in the middle. So maybe we get lucky with a Shamrock. Yes, we just got some reinforcements. And here you can see Sparky's new unit profile in all his glory. This was made using the uh, Tomatron card pack, which you can get from Modiphius, which allows you to mix and match all kinds of robot parts, uh, just like I did with this model and this unit. Now, Sparky's got some new toys, like this uh, handy flamer here, but now that he's uh, online with his new profile, that's also going to apply to uh, if he's not in control of our forces either. So for the remainder of the game, Sparky just became a little bit more deadly for everyone involved. Uh, I'm gonna use him to tie up the Fire Brigade Protectron. Uh, he's gonna move once, move twice to tie him up, uh, mainly because he's the last one to activate and he could have put a real big hurt on Jake. But now uh, he's gonna have to put some attacks into Sparky. Just an improvised weapon attack, nothing fancy. It's gonna miss, hitting on ones. Yeah, first one misses, and second one misses. That's round three, and it's gonna be a close one here, folks. The Soul Survivor, once again, near death. Jake, similar situation with our piece of intel. Sparky's online and running around. Kate is absolutely mobbed. It's a gong show. Let's get into round four. 
Ventec for round four is Super Mutant Broadcast. One we've seen many times before with Super Mutants out in the wasteland, but no effect. And one last time, let's see if Sparky is on our side. Oh yeah, good man. Okay, top of round four and I'm up first. Uh, but first things first, Jake's going to lose his poison, but gain a poison damage, uh, leaving him with one hit point left. Uh, so I think I just have to make the safe play right off the bat. Get the boring stuff out of the way. Yeah, I'm just gonna move him here, uh, get some cover, uh, and then with second action, we will prepare in case he needs to run away again. Uh oh, but the uh, gray Protectron, unfortunately, doesn't enjoy that, and he's gonna take two shots at Jake, so he's pretty much the only one who can really do much damage, so it's kinda gonna come down to this in a lot of ways. We need to weather this storm. Protectron at long range hitting on crits or cogs because of shooting through cover. In a shockingly similar twist to uh, our last episode, Jake is down uh, and there lies the intel we need to get to the forge. So I think we know who's gonna come chasing after uh, after that there, but uh, we're gonna have to uh, round out, well, this Protectron's next shot first, he's gonna shoot at Preston now. Uh, this time he's at close range, uh, again, hitting on crits or cogs. Okay, that's more like it. Back to my side and Preston once again cleaning up everybody's mess, moving once to go and collect our token there. Uh, and then we're going to take a shot. Uh, we're gonna take a shot at our target of opportunity there, the Robo Brain. Yup. That's also a hit uh, for two armor breaks. So uh, now he's only gonna have well, I guess it's one plus one armor uh, because shooting through cover takes one point of damage. One hit point left. Preston almost sniped him out there, but uh, it's gonna go back to the bots. Not having much of a chance to do anything in this game, Golden Boy is gonna make a charge into Kate just because that seems to be the popular thing to do. And now it's time for Kate to do her thing. She's gonna take her tire iron and try to beat the sh out of that robo brain. Kate with a tire iron hitting on sevens. Oh, come on. You gotta be kidding me. One more chance. Here we go. <laughs> okay, there we go. It hits. Uh, it hits, but this thing's got uh, this thing's got some armor. Two damage, three armor. Okay, one stopped, one goes through. That was all that was needed. The robo brain. <laughs> Finally, down as a pile of scrap. With their command bot now destroyed, there's no one left to hack for the robo brains and their command structure falls apart like so much dust in the wind, leaving Preston and the Begang to hightail it out of here into the final encounter. Well, there you have it, Wastelanders. Another close win thanks to Preston Garvey, but poor old Jake just can't seem to keep his head on his shoulders these days. But I think he can pull himself back together in time for the final showdown with Slag, Bedlam, and the rest of the Forge that's coming very soon, and it's going to be a barn burner. Thank you all again so much for watching, and if you haven't heard, we're currently raising funds for the WGNR Next Level Upgrade Challenge. It's a wild situation we have found ourselves in, but the long and the short of it is we only need a couple hundred dollars more in the fundraising to hit our goal. So check the link in the description and the card popping up here. If you haven't heard about it already, go and check it out. And if you really like what we do here on the channel, then consider becoming a member of our Patreon or the little YouTube join button down here where you can join the ranks of these fine folks that help us make videos more often for you to enjoy. You get the usual kickbacks like early access to videos, double entry into future giveaways, and you could even become a named character in a future battle report or live stream. So thank you again so much for watching and stay tuned because as always, WGNR will be back.